welcome back to the channel guys hope everyone's doing well so today i'm sitting in the studio and we're running completely off of solar and wind energy so completely renewable energy um, which is running this studio half of it's my workshop half of it's my studio but basically if you've been following the videos you'll know the journey that i've been on to kind of get to this point and set all this stuff up so in today's video i'm just going to give you kind of a rundown of how i've set it up um, and also we're going to go into a bit of um, beat making and i'm going to show you how i actually made the tune for this video right so here's the solar panels on the outside of the house that's the studio and the workshop there and there's the wind turbine so we've got 800 watts of solar or pv should i say so it all runs straight into here this is the heart of the system this is the thing that powers everything this is the power rack so basically the solar or pv comes into here you can isolate it and you can also switch it between charging batteries or sending some power back into the house or a mixture of both because we are actually generating a lot more power than we need to run this studio setup. So right now the battery's at 86% because it's the morning, we used a little bit of power last night just to keep everything running. There isn't really any wind power at the moment as we approach the summer months, it's been pretty calm outside, so we're sitting about 86%. So this blue thing down here is the inverter, this is the thing that takes the battery voltage and turns it into mains voltage so you can run all your gear. So if you know anything about this stuff or you're a bit of a studio geek like me, you'll know all this gear behind me kind of runs off of different voltages and you end up with, you know, power supplies, which are all mains power supplies. So you end up with those kind of knock knocking around. Now, you know, it's just better to use an inverter to power all these things. You could do it another way, uh, but it just gets a bit complicated. So for this purpose, I've just used an inverter to just supply mains voltage and then you can just plug it in like you would if you were at home in a normal studio. That being said, there is a lot more stuff these days that takes its power from USB. So that's what this little box is for. It takes 12 volts and turns it into USB power and then you get a bunch of outputs here which you can use to power gear and you just have to extend these leads a little bit so you can get them over here to anything that runs on USB. So that's a good way of doing it. So onto the studio then, we'll start off at the top. So we've got Yamaha monitors. I've always liked these monitors, just classic monitors. Sound really great, very, very flat response and just lots and lots of punch. Now these are active um, monitors. I'm not sure the exact, exact power rating on these, but this is a perfect example of why you need you know, quite a substantial inverter to actually run them because when these are cranked up, they can draw you know, 200, 300 watts, something like that. So you do need a bit of power. Um, behind them. The monitor's just turned off. These two things aren't really used. That's just a PA mixer and that's just a sound card. So over on the left-hand side, we've got a Roland System 1. I've had this keyboard for about a year. Absolutely love it. It's just brilliant for just getting a sound, manipulating it quick, you know, no nonsense, no kind of funky displays to go for. It's just hands-on. The sounds are just massive, so good. And then right in the middle, I've got the Akai MPC Live, which is an absolute beast. It's the centerpiece of this studio because this, the main purpose of this studio is to not use a computer to do sequencing and all that sort of stuff. It's to get away from that and kind of play things and get things down live. So this is a MIDI setup. Um, and this thing controls the MIDI, but now they've added just so much more stuff. You've got um, virtual instruments in here, and there's so much more things you can do with the latest updates. The, the, you know, they've added like a side chain compressor on here as well, load more effects. It's just an absolute beast. And then we come across to here. This is where I get the fatness for my drums. So this is just a complete drum machine, um, TR8S, it's modelled like, it uses a lot of the old old sounds um, and samples from the old drum machines, but it's also got this kind of ACB modelling thing, um, which kind of models the analogue circuits of the, the old drum machine, so it, it just sounds just so fat. I used to use Akai rack samplers for beats back in the day in my old studios, um, but you know, right now I'm just loving this, it's just the sounds are just so big. So moving on down to this, this is a Native Instruments Complete Control um, keyboard, although it's not strictly hardware because it actually triggers sounds that come from a computer. Um, I've got a MacBook, just a standard MacBook here because it hasn't got fans and it's very, very good for, for kind of audio stuff. Um, no nonsense. Yeah, so I, I love it because you've just got such a range of sounds. You can modify everything. It's like using a hardware keyboard, but of course, you know, your modules come up here. So I'm not running this in a door. I'm just running this actually just standalone on the computer, which is good because it's no nonsense. It's actually, it behaves like hardware because it's always on and it's always there. I don't get any issues with it running on this, um, this little computer. It, it's just as if it was a hardware synth and you can do everything on this like select the sounds and you know do all this there's some extra bits you can do on there um with effects and things like that but yeah i have got my and some hardware sims as well but this is good there's a massive amount of sounds and the libraries just keep expanding as well so that's good right and finally on to this so this is actually one of the most recent things that i've got in here um because i wanted to go back to kind of like the old audio recorders so this is a 16 channel um audio multi-tracker very very simple very straightforward 
wasn't very expensive and it's just awesome. It acts as a mixer as well, so you can obviously plug all your outboard gear into this. Um, but I'm just finding that this, I'm just loving the way this is working because you can just lay down some tracks, um, you know, just keep multi-tracking things. You've got eight inputs there, um, the stereo and mono. You can basically double those up to 16. There's no editing on this, but you can actually move tracks around. So if you record on, say, these two channels, you can actually, um, you know, reselect that file and, and play them back on another two. So you can keep layering stuff up it's just awesome, it's just a great tool for getting something down really quick. You haven't got to worry about the computer crashing or doing anything that it shouldn't be doing because it's running other stuff. This thing is always there, always on, you just push the buttons and it just works, which is just what I love about hardware. So there you go guys, this is like my quick creative setup for getting ideas down really quickly and efficiently. Um, most of the tracks that you hear in, this, in the videos that I make, you know, start off in here, I kind of get ideas down and then I'll just take them inside and just finish them off on the laptop you know, get all the audio levels right and, you know, properly mix it, maybe add some extra bits and pieces. And of course, the best thing is it's all running off the solar power. Look, we've even charged the batteries a little bit. Anyway, let's show you the workflow and I'll show you how I made that tune at the beginning. Right, let's get started then. So I've been playing around with a little synth, which is a plug-in on this now. And the latest update gives you this. And then you get this little button here, which basically tells you that you can add a plug-in on that channel now. And then when you do that, it shows you the plug-in there, tube synth, um, and then that is a preset, which I've just been messing around with now. So if we just hit menu and then go into program edit, you can see there's all the synth parameters. So recognize that riff. So I need two hands to play this. So now I'm happy with that little riff, I'm gonna record it into the NPC. So I've actually got a MIDI out going out of this, going to trigger this. Obviously that's how I'm triggering the sound, which is coming out of the NPC. And then I'm now I'm gonna actually record it into the MPC as, as basically like MIDI data. All right, stop that and you can see the MIDI data on there. So that's all recorded in and that will just basically loop for eternity. Right, it's so on to the drums now. So I've picked a couple of samples. We've got nice big kick there, um, all these other samples in here, which were in here before, um, and then this kind of like sort of snappy snare. So this is the thing I'm gonna try and do, sort of like a... And then obviously put a hi-hat in there or something like that. So I'm gonna program that in now. Start with a bass drum. Um, so we're gonna go here, here, um probably there and then what three and then just do two at the end like that so we're gonna have that's it and then we're gonna need to put the snare in there as well so snare is this one here so oh which is actually meant to be an open hi-hat but i've got it as a snare so that's that one there so what i'm going to do now is i'm actually just going to record that in um rather than program it in so i can kind of get a bit of a groove on and the way you do that is just hit that instrument record thing and then start it. So you can start the kicks like that and then we can put the um, snare in. So that's the main part of the beat. I'm just gonna stick some hi-hats in there as well. So hi-hats are on this one here. I've just turned the level up and just audition the sound by just hitting that. So I'm gonna program this in as in the normal kind of drum machine way. So I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, miss one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. And then we should get something that sounds pretty cool. Just a little groove. Right, so if we come back over to the MPC now, I've actually got a MIDI out lead plugged into the MIDI in of this. The reason for that is so I can actually sync these two together. So when you hit the start button, it will actually start the drum machine as well, perfectly in sync and in tempo, matching with the master tempo that is set on the MPC. So if we hit play now, you'll hear both parts playing. So you've got the, the synth and the drum, but they're actually coming from their own side. So drums are coming from there, and the um, obviously the synth is coming from that. And the individual outputs are fed into here, so you've got complete control of the sound. Right, so now I'm going to think about a bass line. So I'm going to hit main back out of here, go into the other track which I've got here, 
Um, I've already selected this sample, um, it's not a sample actually, it's another virtual instrument, um, which is a baseline synth. So I've gone into that there. If we go back out of this and then go into, um, where is it, it's program edit. And you can basically see here, um, this is just a very simple baseline synth. Now I've actually got this set on, you can see all the presets down here. Um, I've actually got set just set on a sub tone. So, so if we go back to that and then start playing on this keyboard, you should hear, he says, um, probably not, probably got something muted down here. You should hear that. So it's actually a little bit quiet, but, and also on the wrong octave as well. So if we bring this down, you might not even hear that because but it's basically shaking the walls of the, uh, of the studio. So that bass sound there. Um, it's actually doubling with the sound from this keyboard as well. So I can just turn that off and then you're just gonna get that subtone on its own. So this here, I've actually gone, you can see here, this channel here has just got one meter. So what I'm doing is I'm actually feeding the output. You've got like six outputs on the back of this MPC. So I'm using a main stereo pair and then I've, I've kind of separated um, outputs three and four. So one and two of the stereo, I'm using outputs three and four to go into this mixer on here. So I can actually have independent control. I can have a separate um, channel for the bass and a separate channel for another sort of percussion sound or something like that that I might add later. So you can see here, that's why that bass sounds there. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a little bass on the keyboard. You won't be able to hear this from the camera audio probably because it's very, very low. It's like a real sub bass tone, it's lovely, but it's a bit too low for the um, for the microphones on here to pick up. Um, so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna come back and I'll show you what I've recorded. Right, so here's the bass line I've done. I can play it. Don't know if you'll hear this, but. So down here, so what, what I was saying about the audio, you can actually see We've got drums here, we've got the synth sound here, and we've got the bass sound here. So everything's separate and you can control it all, which is perfect. So now we've got all that programmed in, got drums, got a nice synth sound, got a bass sound as well. Use your Andy K style, I just usually whack like a sort of string kind of sound. So I've been playing around with this sound, which is actually like a really nice, it's almost like a little bit kind of Jean-Michel Jarry sort of. Yeah, it's got a really nice filter sound you can sort of you know, modify that, bit of resonance on there. It brings out harmonics, you can actually kind of just make it add some extra sort of tone in there, which actually sounds really good with the rest of the, um, the rest of the stuff. So let's play that in. completely the wrong chords but yeah you get the idea so what I think I'm going to do is record that into the MPC um, just the notes and then actually kind of do the fil filter live when I record it into the um, into the multi tracker so yeah let's record that in You might have noticed at the end of the loop it didn't repeat itself, it wasn't playing back what I'd recorded, so that's because that was muted. So if you turn that off, hit play, you can hear it now. You can also see the pads where it's recorded um, the chords in there. So that's now triggering that keyboard, and then we can modify all that. So now we've got all the tracks we need. We've got drums, we've got that synth, um, that we started with, and then we've got the chords in there, bass line. We've also got a little channel there, which I'm gonna add a little hi-hat, I think. I'll just quickly show you the chords that I've added. So there's, that's the chords, that was what we were just listening to there, those chords there. Right, so I've gone back over to here to track three, which I actually had like a little, little sample there, and I've added some hi-hats in, I've programmed them in, and I've actually done it like this. So, and these are kind of the really fast beats, the sort of that sort of sound. So I'll show you what I've done. You'll probably hear it over the top of it when I kind of hear that. Hear that little. Just gives it a bit of character. Now I could have done that on there because you can actually change all the time signatures and you can add kind of really fast beats on, onto these ones as well. So change, changing the time division, but I just done it on here because it's a lot easier to kind of program them in and just, 
anyway I had that sample there so it was just easier to do so now you can see got all the tracks here pretty much every track every channel is being used on here now so we can do that the great thing about this of course is then you can actually add another bunch of tracks so you can add another um, eight tracks on there as well to give you 16 in total so all that needs to happen now is I just need to basically just hit record on this and then everything will just get recorded as individual audio tracks into here and then I can just export them there's an SD card in the side of it it's all, all saved onto that I can just whack that back into the computer back in the office or wherever else I'm going to do it on the laptop oh uh, yeah there was one final synth sound in here which was actually coming from this which is the um, the complete control and I did a little pitch bend my finger's not going to stretch so I better put the camera down I'll show you so it's this one so I'll just play that over the top of it turn it down a bit So because that's like my ninth channel I'm not going to fit it on here I'll have to move over to the next bank and then I can record that in right guys so I've recorded everything into here now um, all the individual tracks are in here you can see I've basically what I did was just kind of mute and unmute things on the actual gear itself so I started off with the synth sound and then kind of opened up the, the uh, drum sound and now you can see the synth sound as well the little kind of guitar -y like thing I've moved the drums over to these two channels and to give me an extra couple there and then I think we've got something on that channel as well which I think is the simp actually I've, picked, I've moved things around basically so that I could kind of make better use of the tracks and um, the last thing I recorded was obviously that little guitar thing so that's there and yeah it's all, all down so you can kind of build up a song quite easily you don't actually have to physically play every part because that would be impossible so you can kind of just mute things actually on here you've got a mute um, section so you can actually kind of um, you know just mute and unmute things to, to kind of play the tracks in live this isn't the this isn't the exactly correct way of doing it but um, it, it does work so you can hear all the different different pads and parts you can just adjust all the levels but you can also mute them as well so you know you can just bring things in and take things away as you're playing so there you go so with all those tracks stored on that multi-tracker now, you can just basically take the SD card out of this and put it into a laptop, which I've got here, my trusty MacBook Pro, and then you can see I've just dragged all of the, or just brought in all of the, um, the audio files from, um, from this, and then just basically just put them and laid them out in, uh, in Logic. And then what I've actually done here is I've just kind of tweaked a few bits here and there, just changed, got the levels right, and on the chords I actually put a side chain um, I think this is the chords. I'm useless at labeling things. Yeah, I've put a bit of a side chain on here. Uh, I don't know if you'll hear this, but you can actually hear it pulsing in and out. See, it just kind of comes in. This is only the speakers on the um, on the MacBook here, so I haven't plugged it into the system. But you can hear it kind of pulsing in and out, um, and that's just done by like a just a normal compressor, which is built into Logic. And if you open that up. You can see, and it's actually one of the presets, which is Type R Light. Um, I may do another video about all this sort of stuff because sidechain is quite a popular thing right now in in a lot of this sort of music. It just pulses in and out. It, it basically means the kick drum or the um, the drum kit is just affecting the level of the of the chord. So you end up with this kind of nice. You can sort of hear it. It just adds emphasis to it. Little tricks of the trade. Apart from that, I've just done. Um, little samples here you can see I've just added like a little little kind of white noise type thing and also layered that up with like a kind of reverse vocal type thing there you go so this leaves you with the finished track guys so you can see how it all turned out I'll probably upload this to my SoundCloud as well so I'll leave the link in the description hope you've enjoyed watching this and that's been a different one um, if you like this sort of stuff let me know if you want me to do sort of more tutorials on any of this gear then happy to do that meanwhile we're just going to crack on do all the usual stuff we like doing hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one guys